Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Kintsugi Podcast. I'll be back in a minute with today's conversation about resilience. But first, if you're interested in creating a better life, having a better career, please visit kintsugipodcast.com and grab your free workbook on how to have a better life. In it, you'll discover tips and routines so you can find the energy for the things and the people who matter most so you can create a better tomorrow and create the life and career you desire. Hey there, it's Michael. So in the dog world, there's a concept that your energy travels down the leash to your dog. And last week, I got to see this in practice. We are a family of dog owners. We have two Springer Spaniels. One is Jester, J-E-S-T-E-R. The other is Hopi Girl. And we also have two cats. Well, last week, I took a day off, a rare day off, to spend with my boo, my wife, and volunteered at a canine nose work trial. Now, if you're not familiar with what a canine nose work trial is, let me explain. It's a competition where the handlers, the humans, work with their best friends, the dogs, to find hidden scents like Anis and a few others. The handling team, the human and dog team that can do it the fastest, scores points and can win the competition. And to love on my wife a little bit. She is awesome sauce at it. So I was totally excited to go because I've heard a lot about these competitions, but I've never seen one in person because she likes to compete without the pressure of the family watching her. So I would get the play-by-play when she'd come back from her competitions, but I never saw it in action. I had a good feeling, but you know how it is. Sometimes you need to see it to understand it. So I decided to volunteer with her, spend the day with her. And it was a great day. It was a little hot, but it was a great day. My role was that of timekeeper, which gave me this great opportunity to watch all the teams in action. And I love the whole concept of mindset. If you've listened to Kintsugi Podcast, Conversations About Resilience, you know a big part of what I coach on with executive leaders, leaders in the middle, just humans in general, is the power of mindset. It's what helped me get through my last bad day. It helps me drive the success I have today. So one of the most important factors in the team's success was just that mindset, more specifically, how they showed up for their searches. There were six searches for the whole competition. Some were inside, some were outside, some were under automobiles. And it's pretty tricky because the wind can play around with the scent the conditions, how hot and humid it is can play around with the scent. So it's not an easy thing. Many teams weren't successful, but many teams were. The teams that weren't successful in getting the searches done in the allotted time just didn't show up the right way. In other words, their energy was off. And most specifically, it was the handler, the human's energy. Many lost before I even hit the stopwatch to help them start their search or put them on their way for their search because they had so much negative energy, worry, fear, anxiety, mainly anxiety and worry, doubt that traveled down the leash to their dog. And animals can pick up on this. They can pick up on when we are happy and loving and optimistic, but also when we're worried, fearful, angry, frustrated, you name it. Now, others the handling team, the human and the dog, who happened to do really well, who won, they rocked it because they put forth or had their energy travel down the leash that was filled with confidence and enthusiasm and love. And their Fido, their Dookie, their Hopi girl picked up on that vibe. Animals are really amazing. If you're a pet owner, you know this because animals can pick up on the energy out there, whatever it may be. Our Hopi girl can let us know when a storm is coming. She can pick up on the atmospheric energy changes. So a half an hour before a big thunderstorm, she will come find me. And even though she's petrified, it's sort of adorable because she wants to burrow into me. Now it's a little tough at night. (laughs) And we've had some moments at night where she just wants to like crawl underneath my skin as a way to protect herself. But us 
humans, we're pretty cool too. We can also pick up on each other's energy, or some people would call it a vibe or a mojo or a juju. We can do that too, although it's a little bit muted or has become muted over time as we developed a way to grunt to communicate because our energy was a way to communicate before we started grunting and long before we came up with language and vocabulary and all that jazz, but we still have it. And in terms of personal responsibility here in the States, we love our personal responsibility, which I do too, but we still need a system that can support the personal responsibility or a system that can bring equity and equality to all if they put forth the personal responsibility to have the success that they desire. Well, how we show up, the energy we allow to travel down our leash, if you will, is one thing we can all control. And in this moment in time where we don't feel like we can control much because of COVID, it's the one thing that we can. That's why I love this sign I saw on one of my friend's Facebook feeds a couple of weeks ago. It's from the Indiana University Health System. If you're outside of the U.S. listening to this, Indiana is in the Midwestern part of our country here in the United States. And the sign was in the lobby of the health system. Basically, you want to go to the doctor, get checked up on, you have a health concern, maybe a COVID concern. So the sign read like this. I'll read it to you. Please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Your words matter. Your behaviors matter. Our patients and our teams matter. Take a slow, deep breath and make sure your energy is in check before entering. Thank you. Now, how awesome sauce is that? Imagine if we all did that a little bit more. Now, back in March and April, when New York was on fire, New Jersey too, with COVID. It's much better now here in July, but back in March and April and early May, whew, it was scary. I made this analogy through a few webinars. You may have caught a couple of them. If not, they're on YouTube. You can check them out. The COVID, the analogy I made is that COVID is more like a triathlon than a marathon. We've all heard that analogy that, or they're saying that life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Well, COVID to me is a triathlon rather than a marathon. It's longer and it will come in phases. But unlike a triathlon, we don't know how long this is going to be for. We don't know when it's going to end. Right now, I feel like we're in the second phase of it, the control phase, as I said in the webinar. Like the bike phase of a triathlon, it's also the longest. And this is the phase where we really need to focus in on what we have control over, like wearing our mask and how we're showing up. So back to that sign, what Indiana University Health System wanted their patients, their caregivers, maybe their employees to do, is to stop, take a slow breath, and check their energy before walking in. So imagine what the world would be like, what your community would be like, maybe your place of employment. I know we're not back to work, at least most of us are not back to work, but some of us are still working and have been working through this whole thing. But imagine how much different things would be if we all took responsibility to do a little bit more of the pause, breathe, and reflect, that I like to say. And we checked our energy before we jumped on, say, a Zoom call, made a call, walked through the door, any type of interaction, that we just took a moment to pause, breathe, and reflect before we did that, to make sure that our energy that we wanted to put out there, that we wanted to ripple, that we want to cascade or travel down our leash was the right type of energy. So I just love what Indiana University's health system did. I give them two thumbs up because during stressful times, and this is a stressful time, our words matter so much more. The need to communicate clearly is so essential right now because we don't listen well under stress. We don't communicate as well under stress. So choosing our words wisely. So we have to be thoughtful and mindful about that. We can't be reactionary. Matters so much. So does our behaviors. Our behaviors matter in this moment. And again, going back to personal responsibility, this is a moment where we can take personal responsibility on how we're showing up and what type of energy we're allowing to travel down our leash. And so when we do anything in our work, 
with our families. It's important to just spend a few minutes in that pause, breathe, and reflect. And reflect can be this great big umbrella that can allow you a few seconds of gratitude. Maybe it's an opportunity to see the possibilities of the next encounter during your day. Maybe it's just about setting your intentions about how you want to show up. What type of ripple do you want to put out there? And then show up with this me, right? We versus me vibe. Too often we have this energy. There's a whole bunch of folks out there that believe that in order for me to win, you have to lose. Or there's that victim energy of worry and fear and guilt and shame. There's a lot of that in today's society. And that's not helping us create a better tomorrow. That's just holding us back. So the more we can show up with we over me, it allows us to step into servant leadership. It allows us to step into what an emotionally intelligent leader would do. And it's also just the nice thing to do. And we need a little bit more nice. We need a little bit more kindness and a whole less judgment out there. That's how we're going to create, hopefully soon, what our new normal or a better normal can be, our better tomorrow. So in a world that's crazy, in a world that's in the second phase of this COVID triathlon, as I like, would like to see it or reference, it's so easy to feel like you don't have much control over anything. But the one thing we always have control over is how we show up. It's our energy and what we allow to travel down our leash to other people. So as always, thanks for listening to the Kintsugi Podcast Conversations of, on Resilience. I hope you'll share this with others. I hope you'll subscribe. This was a project that I started back when COVID hit because in this moment, we need resilience. We are getting through this, although sometimes it doesn't feel like we are, but we are getting through this. Each day, we're a little bit closer to the end. We just have to remember to pause, breathe, and reflect, connect with each other, pedal love, not hate, pedal love, not judgment, and try to have a focus or an orientation that this is happening for us, not to us, because that's what this moment calls for. It calls for the right type of energy. Now, around the whole pause, breathe, and reflect, in the next week or two, I'm going to create a little store on my website, which is michaelobrienshift.com. You can get there too through the kintsugipodcast.com where we have a new t-shirt, the first ever merch for Peloton Executive Coaching. It's the Pause, Breathe, and Reflect t-shirt. And there's a really cool message inside the shirt, but you can only pick up on that message if you get a shirt. So stay tuned for more details. We'll have the store open hopefully over the next week or two. So again, thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing and subscribing. If you have a question for me about anything or if you want to talk about energy further, just head to kintsugipodcast.com. Leave your question there and I'll get in contact with you or I'll answer it here on the Kintsugi Podcast. And while you're there, you can also check out our Paceline Leadership Academy, which is something incredibly special. There's really nothing like it for corporate warriors out there, especially if you're a aspiring leader or a leader in the middle who wants someone in the trenches with them, who would like to have an executive coach, but you just don't rank high enough to get one. Well, we have a great program that's part community, part executive coaching, part personal development, you name it, in a safe, healthy, vibrant energy. So you can create the life and the career you desire. Because in today's corporate world, the workshops that we're doing, they aren't working well enough for us. And for many, you've lost, maybe you've lost it, maybe you never had it, that one person where you can be totally open and honest with at work. In the Leadership Academy, we work on workshops, learning, education, all that jazz, but we also pull it through through the coaching and you get someone who is in your corner objectively, confidentially, without judgment, that can show up with you in the trenches and work on the things that you need to work on to be your partner, to create that life that you truly desire and the career that you truly desire so you can grow as a leader and then make more of an impact so you can create a better tomorrow, not only for yourself, but everyone else in your peloton. So I hope you'll check that out. And until next week in our next conversation about resilience on the Kintsugi Podcast, please check your energy. Remember to pause, breathe, and reflect. And of course, have fun. 
Storm of the Castle. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.